maybe allowing yourself to hear and connect within and, and noticing some of those kind of sounds that come into the movement of the shoulders, the sort of pops and cracks and kind of little grinding sounds that can happen, you know, first thing in the morning. And then release your left arm overhead. Maybe an elbow will bend or you will extend through that left side. Elongate. Faces forward, eyes are open or closed, and then extending into Parshva Tadasana, side bending mountain, reaching out through the fingers if that's appropriate, gazing up. And avoid holding the breath. Floating, lengthening, right arm up overhead. Again, think about maybe just bending the elbow and feeling some space coming into the right side lungs. Trying to have your pelvis level so that you open into your side bending mountain. Just making sure there's not extra areas of tension that are unnecessary. And then rotating the gaze up, if that helps. Inhale, exhale through nose, or inhale, nose, exhale, mouth. And experience the pose, and then release. Again, a little roll of the shoulders as necessary. Then we're gonna rotate the body. Take the right palm onto the left hip. Take the left palm behind the back. Soften knees enough, but without sitting into a chair pose and bending them. I would re-spread through the feet so that the feet are really centered. Breathe and turn left. So almost as if you're just gently pressing the left hip back. Shoulders draw down away from the ears, over the shoulders, looking over the left shoulder. Try not to lean forward or back. Restacking as you enter the midline again. Inhale as you exhale, twist to the left again. <sighs> Inhaling to center through the nose and exhaling out through the mouth as you rotate. <sighs> Centering and shaking out the hands. Left palm towards the right hip. Right arm binding. This is a half bind when we take the arm around the back hip or waist. First one, just referencing how it feels on this side, rotating right, turning the head and neck quite extensively, eyes to the right, looking over the right shoulder. Breathing all the way through as you come back. Inhale, nose, exhale, mouth. And inhale, nose. Centering, exhale through open lips. And then releasing back to centre. I'm going to take a few arm swings into some body swings. So still in a kind of gentle warm-up phase, but physical flow is coming very soon. Softening the knees, inhaling up, glancing up. And exhale, soft swing. And the swing can be quite quite upright, first of all. Just an exhale, swinging the arms, that would be super relaxed. But then going into full body swing, maybe with the feet a little wider, if that's good to this morning. And then just finding that you come to the top of the practice mat. And let's bring the palms into heart center, into Pranamasana. Maybe align your feet gently, hip wide. And start to 
connect more deeply to the rhythm of your breath. Remember that your breath is super personal. It's completely individual. And on any given day, the breathing will alter according to your mood and whether you have like, you know, last week I had that, that really bad cold. Um, essentially it, it sort of started mild and then there were kind of peaks of cold and then it wasn't too bad. But obviously my breathing was affected. So be aware of how your breath flows in and out, but feel no desire to literally fix it. Just let it flow. And remember that that is at the heart of yoga practice is being able to be guided by the flow of your breath. Let's salutation to the sun now as you inhale and lift the heart and open the chest three dimensionally from back and sides. Exhale, ragdoll, bent knees or Uttanasana. And then inhale, hands on shins or lightly onto knees, bending knees, table back. Sometimes with tabletop back, Adho Uttanasana, we lift the face forward and we kind of lead with the chin and that can feel um, crushing to the neck. So just be aware of your tendency in that pose. And then retain that lifting space in the chest. Place the right hand onto the mat, bending the right knee more significantly. Rotate, left hand on the hip, and float the left arm up or reach it up. And at this point, if you want more height, obviously take hold of your brick and lift away more. Try not to send your buttocks backwards. So grow length out of the sacrum into the heart and expand. Looking up to sky as you inhale, exhale. Leveling off the arms parallel from the heart and then turn the gaze down. And instead of collapsing your body down onto that block, if you're using the block or brick, Draw energy away so that you've kind of got a light fingertip touch or you've altered your position enough to create more growth in the pose. One or two more breaths, spread out the toes and then exhale, fold. And fold again into a rag doll or maybe a full Uttanasana. If you can hold your elbows, if that feels okay, take a little sway. Let the spine unravel and micro bending the knees, tipping the weight forward. And then again, choose maybe to use your brick or block, bending the left knee. The left knee, of course, wants to track forward, not to roll in. So, watching that you retain the inner arch, please, uh, Claire and Ross, really retain that inner arch on the foot, lifting your toes, planting your toes looking not to roll into that inside foot. Right hand on the hip, start to turn the heart chest. And then open up as best you can. And that right leg is quite firm and long. Pelvis is rotated as you lift the gaze, inhale, exhale, softening the forehead. And then look down to your mat and just lift again or lengthen heart forward. Maybe you can twist those hips a little more and enjoy. And then exhale. And again, fold or your Uttanasana. And press the palms strongly to mat. And step back to down face dog. Lifting your hips high and just adjusting yourself. First down face dog of our morning, and then start to moderately or mindfully pedal out those legs. Anchoring through one heel as you lengthen, and then bending through the other. A couple of times more, and then release down onto all fours. And re-spread your palms intentionally, and rolling the spine now into cow pose, shoulder blades 
draw back and the chest opens widely as you inhale. Calmly exhaling, navel to spine and drawing the back into a rounded hill shape, chin to chest. And then noticing this valley as the belly softens down. But try not to collapse the shoulders into your ears. So keep lengthening through the arm bones without locking the elbows. Deep exhale, possibly through open lips. And then curl the toes. Re-lift into your Adho Mukha Check the feet here. You might want to have hip wide feet or you may want to have shoulder wide feet. If you're feeling particularly stiff through the legs, you may even want to choose a mat wide down dog and work there with your energy into those bent legs again. Crouching dog, elongating. And then we're going to squeeze both feet, toes together, hollow the belly, rounding over and walking into Kumbhakasana, the plank, pressing earth away. And then as you lengthen forward, can you either bring knees down and find cobra pose or lower the pelvis, squeeze the legs together, lift the chest, up face dog glancing up to the sky if that's suitable for you and then lower body to the mat forehead touches and this deep inhale as you exhale extended child's pose and then rise into down face dog sweep your right leg up in an arrow a single leg dog and then as you bend your knee your right heel drops towards the left hip or pelvis slight rotation take this moderately or calmly as you roll and rotate into dog hip opener pausing here and then bring your right foot forward on the floor outside your hands. Slide the left ball of the foot back so that you're in quite a low pelvis. This is kind of active, is it? Now, if you need to pop your knee down, that's absolutely fine. So your right knee is above the right ankle. Nice, strong plank-like arms. And then just get into a little bit of swaying, breathing. Just understanding how those hips feel today. And then re-engage through the arms, lift your hips a little higher, take the right leg underneath you, and outside edge of right foot comes towards the left. And as you rotate, lift up into your first side plank with a kind of scissor leg. Right wrist, under the shoulder, if you need to adjust, just step the right hand, half a hand forward, which is something I need to do. So I'm putting both hands down again, and then just lifting back, left hand on the hip, gaze upwards, or if you have the ability, bring the left arm over the ear and enjoy your first strong balance. Lifting, lifting, lifting through the pelvis, lengthening the tail, Strong core required. As you come back, pivot back to plank. So taking the table back into energy, left ball of the foot, and bring the right knee into the heart, rounding the back, pressing the earth away. So your knee comes to the chest, and that is the right knee. Breathing. And then please rest that right knee down, right knee, shin, foot. And raise the left leg. And really allow that left leg to start to come up towards the sky. 
in a moment here, we'll curl that leg coming into a tiger pose. Drawing up through that left toe foot. And then lengthen the leg. You might want to step your hands wider than the mat. We're going to take three half Chaturanga Dandasana here. So inhale as you lower, and it's a press up pose. And then we push away, exhaling. Inhale lower. Exhale to press away. This is very beneficial for the muscles of the shoulders and the chest. You get that lovely hip extension on the pose. And then bring the knees underneath you and send the buttocks back, resting in extended child's pose. You might want to, of course, just nuzzle through the hips, give you some little swaying action. And you can even come to a moment of seated kneeling, if you prefer. We use this moment to mindfully reconnect to your breath. And then let's re-enter Adhamukha down face dog, face forward, face forward down, crown down, sorry, not face forward. And then re-lengthen your right leg up to sky, this time just a lovely arrow. Flex, point your right foot, and then step the right foot underneath you and rise to first warrior. Strong legs, we're gonna start with very firm legs. And as the arms come overhead, Exhale to bend into your right knee. Right knee in line with the ankle. You can hook the thumbs or lace the fingers together or you can bring your arms wide. So choosing the, the correct position for your shoulders, you know, you might want to have a much bigger sort of Y shape going on. And then lift up on the inhale and arc back a little. Exhaling to bend into that right knee again. And just check whether, just really checking whether your left foot knee, left hip knee foot, wants to be grounded, because obviously that would be a classical position, or whether you want your left heel to be lifted so that your pelvis is more uh, front facing. So you're just going in and out of these two beautiful positions for courage and vitality and strength. And then separate the palms. Choice, of course, to have T arms. Choice, of course, to have arms pressing back. Or you can even just bring your hands to the hips and then sort of add in the arm position afterwards. And then start to lift. Push the heel away and coming into warrior three, Virabhijasana three. Holding steady without gripping. Just working into your best position. And then as you travel through, come onto that right standing leg, bring the hands into prayer form. Lift the left knee so the knee has Foot coming through from the back position. The leg behind you comes forward and press the leg. Kind of feel that lift into the thigh. If you need to, you can bend the leg and move this way, you know, so kind of gradually finding that strength or you can come back here. And then we'll hands to heart, return to your warrior one, gradually extending the arms overhead. Look up to sky if that suits you, inhale, exhale. Send the left ball foot back more. So remember at this time you're on the ball of the foot and then lower the knee. Adjusting your body into 
the low lunge and Janyasana. And then reach the arms into T shape, palms press down, shoulders down. Inhale, exhale, rotate left. Look over your left shoulder. Look towards the right palm. Try not to collapse. So stacking, breathing. And then curl the back toes and see if you can lift into warrior two. So when you take that transition, just take care again of that back foot, hip, knee and ankle, comfortable. And usually we have like a 20 to 30 degree angle on that back foot. So the heel of the back foot turns out and the right knee realigns over the right ankle. So just pausing to find a steady Virabhadrasana two. Inhale, exhale, take the left hand to the left thigh. Reach up to the sky, spread the palm, inhale, exhale. And then bring the right thigh forearm to join. Coming into Parjvakanasana, the side angle pose. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And then find your block, or brick, potentially, and best practice here would be to have a yoga brick or a stack of blocks, or you could use wall table chair shelf. And as you plant your brick, Remember that it can't really line up with your right baby little toe. It has to come forward so that you have the ability to space the chest and the spine. So hopping into your Adha Chandrasana. I'm about to plummet into my wall, as you can see. And then float or extend the arm. But I would only float or extend your arm if you feel comfortable and confident about the stacking of the left hip on top of the right hip. So if you have to stop the pose and re-enter, then I would say do do that. Watch that this foot of the right foot is not in a strange twisted position. Sometimes I see people transition and the right foot knee is rolling inwards, which is not a stable position. So essentially, if my toes were at 12 noon, my block brick is around about uh, two o'clock, if you think of it that way. So relifting, or perhaps you've been enjoying that pose for some considerable time, keep practicing the ability to spread away and really lift that left leg high. And then we'll step back again into warrior two, uh, warrior one, sorry. Lift up. Enjoy some space again through the ribs. Press the palms, step back to down, face dog. Next, kneeling. And then take the right leg up again and walk your body back towards your left leg for the standing split balance. So as you gradually walk back, try and fold your body over that left leg, following the belly, keeping both finger palms on the mat or you can hold your leg balance differently. And then as you bring both feet down, bend the knees and soften into child's pose. Completely relax the fingers, hands, wrists, elbows and shoulders. So you have your options for child pose. You might have the elbows in front of you, or you might have chosen to bring the hands down by the feet. But if that feels unwelcome at this moment, 
I would again suggest that you just come into kneeling pose. Let's begin that flow on the left side. So curl your toes and connect with the balls of the feet and lift up into your downward face dog. And reach the left leg up to sky, pointing that left foot, really extending up through the left leg. Breathing, breathing, breathing. And then bring the left foot underneath the heart chest, ground it through the right foot, and rise up to Virabhadrasana 1. Straightening the leg. Arms can be narrow or wide, and you can choose to lace the fingers together or not. And on the exhale, bending the left knee above the ankle. And on the inhale, firming the legs, potentially choosing to lean back on that in-breath. So we're going two or three times, bending, lengthening, bending and lengthening. And you can pick up your back heel when you're ready. Maybe bring the hands, arms out into a T-shape and start to weight bear through the left leg, flying into your warrior one. And you, of course, can bring the arms forward. You can take the arms back towards the back heel. And please allow yourself to practice your version of warrior one into warrior three which is one of our classical standing balances it's such a great pose for a morning practice and when you're ready can you slowly stand on that left leg Bring your right knee forward, rebalance yourself, and then push the heel of the right foot away, even if the leg is low, bend and press, and perhaps even again take the arms overhead so that you're in a place of strength in a pose called Ekapalatarasana, single leg mountain. Try not to look at the floor, keep the eyes on the horizon, imaginary crown on the top of the head. Now we'll take the leg back through. It's kind of small moment of re-entering warrior three and then step back and re-find warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. And then rotate, uh, sorry, pick up the back heel. So do not rotate yet. Have your pelvis level and slowly lower, bringing your right knee down, adjusting into your low lunge, Ashra Sanchalasana and Janiyasana with the arms overhead expand. Inhale, exhale, turn right. Look over your right shoulder. Breathe and separate the arms well. And then again, we'll rise. So placing your right foot down, entering your warrior two. If like me, you have a little wobble, then just use your hands to get back up. Right hand to the right hip, reverse the warrior. Breathe, breathe. Left forearm meets the left thigh. Side angle pose. Keep embracing the breath. And then place the right hand on your hip. And at this point, 
might need to hop forward a little to refind the brick and the brick is to the left diagonal of the left toe which would be kind of a, a 10 a.m on the clock face and then slowly mindfully lifting up through the right heel pivot your hip maybe rotate your gaze stay here and then float the right arm up. Ardha Chandrasana, half moon balance, breathing all the way through your version. And enough. When you feel it's enough, you can stand again or re-practice the transition. Or just take care of your alignment. Perhaps use the wall, table, chair block. Have another go at your half moon. And then when you're ready, step back. Again, into warrior one. Feel perhaps more enlivened. To open up a little more or less. Cactus arms is lovely in this pose, so try that if you wish. And then step back to down face dog. Breathe and pedal your legs or lengthen through the foot and heel. And then let the left leg glide up to sky in a dog splits invitation. Stay here and then walk back. Hands come towards the right standing leg. And you may have to bend the leg We'll use a couple of yoga bricks. We'll fold in towards that leg as best you can. Crown down, exhaling, hollow that belly. And then when you're ready, bring both feet down, bring both knees down and resting into child's pose. One more round of breath in your child's pose. And then re-enter down face dog. Reach your left leg up to sky again and curl the knee. Let the left foot come towards the right hip buttock in hip opener dog. Inhale, exhale several times. And then bring your left foot to the outside of the left hand, finding active lizard pose. We did this at the beginning before. So set yourself sway here a few times, planting the hands just a little in front of the shoulder line, perhaps, or finding that plank-like quality intentionally. Let's move into the side plank. So lift the hips high, slide the left leg underneath you towards the right side of the mat and pivot so that you find an enjoyable left side plank, hugging through the midline, right arm to sky or over the ear, Breathe well, lift the hips. Sustain your pose with intelligence. And then come back as if turning to play. Walk your feet round and bring your left knee under the heart chest. You're on the high ball of the right foot, rounding those shoulders, rounding the upper back, hugging that belly in and then landing your left knee below the hip and the right leg sweeps to sky. It's tiger pose here as you hold steady and then curl the knee. Just feel what you can feel. Take the hands wide and then inhale lower the chest and exhale and press away. Now do this three times, we can firm that leg again. 
Let that right leg become an arrow. And then release the buttocks towards the feet. Child's pose. Re-enter regular plank. Pressing the earth away. And then lowering the body or rolling to the fronts of the toes. Lower the pelvis, draw the chest open. Repeating a practice of up face dog, or you can land in your cobra, or even choose sphinx, and then lengthen through. Press the hands under the shoulders, come back to kneeling. Take the right hand out to the right side. So we're going to try couple of actions here. First of all, as the left leg comes out to the left, spiral up and out in a kneeling gate pose. And then take your left hand to the hip, lift the leg. So this is very much like half moon, but kneeling version. And then bend the foot, take hold of the foot ankle, transition into kneeling dancer. Inhale, exhale, and let's try that on the second side. Left hand out to the left a little or on the brick, pivot through the left leg. Right toes come to the mat, spiral up and out through the chest. It's kind of like a knee down side plank or a paragasana gate pose. And then pick up the right leg, press it away. I'm kneeling half moon and then fold the knee. Grab that right foot if you can, push the chest open, pull the heart open. Kneeling dancer. Hands in front of the knees as you fold into ragdoll. And unravel to stand. Ease out the shoulders. Notice how you feel. And bring the palms to the heart. And we can again use a wall table or chair to find heron pose in standing. So let's raise up through the left arm, centering the body. Remember you've got your wall if necessary. <laughs> on either side perhaps, and then bend the knees. Comfortably access the palm to cradle the foot toes. And this is a very upright position, as you know, roll the right shoulder back, just stand really steady. If you wish to transition into kneeling dancer, try not to spiral the hip away. So maybe move in soft and gentle. Gyan Mudra in the hand of the extended palm, finger and thumb makes you gaze towards that. So, you know, you don't have to attack your balance in an aggressive way. Suppose a standing heron, Karamchasana, Tadasana, or Natarajasana. Calmly breathing, soft face. enjoying and then come back to mountain. It's quite nice just to have a little soft circle of the pelvis. Maybe just a gentle spiral of the body. And then re-grounding through the feet. Imagine that Mother Earth is, is where you are meeting yourself. As you bend the knees, you're meeting the earth with kind compassion and bringing that self-compassion into your heart. Self-compassion is a little more than self-care. It's kind of a befriending 
of the state of yourself and how you genuinely feel. It's kind of like a, it's, it's the opposite to the self-critic. It's the, the part of yourself that says, okay, maybe I didn't do that very well. Maybe today I was a little off. Maybe I was a little tired, but that's okay. So just be curious, be kind. Imagine if you were saying to your friends who said, oh, Ros, I really did badly in yoga balance today. And you would immediately say, hey, I'm sure you didn't, Claire. I'm sure you didn't, Ros. I'm sure you were absolutely fine. So think of that sort of speaking to yourself like a best friend. Lengthen the right arm, centering. Remember that arm can also come out to the side. Find wisdom, symbolism, forefinger touches thumb. And then as you bend knees, Outer edge of foot is easier. We bring the thighs together. Remember the knee doesn't come up, it's not hip flexion, it's hip extension. So even if you and I stand very upright, we will find here the back bend. And actually when you stand upright and you get that lovely arches bow shape in yoga, it's a beautiful energy for the morning, I think, this sort of shape. Just lifting the chest away. You can even bend the standing leg. So this foot presses away to create that space, if you wish. Sometimes when I'm teaching this pose, I also invite people to bring the fingertips to the wall so that their pose grows a little deeper. And then of course we take the hand away from the wall. Yeah, so you, you know, you can, um, Create that stronger challenge for yourself if you wish. Maybe one or two more breaths. And then we'll let the pelvis circle. And then make sure you're warm enough. Shake out the body, shake out the arms, the legs, come down to the mat. And as you lay on your back, Again, just shake those legs out. Maybe again, shake the arms out. And as you widen the knees, bend the knees, bring the hands underneath those thighs, and just give yourself a rock in supine happy baby pose. And you can always take the outer edge of the feet as well if you want to, if that's good for you. For the moment in supine happy baby. Spacing out those thighs. And then bring the feet down, arms relaxed. Just continue the rolling twisting, letting the thighs fall to the left and right and work your feet into the buttocks a little closer. Or you can always separate the feet. Personally, I do quite like having mat wide feet in a floor twist because I love the way that it creates that soft length in the front of the thigh. Fold the knees into the chest as you exhale, Apanasana, your supine curl. And then bring your arms up overhead, inhale. And exhale, supine curl again. And then land, of course, your feet. And let your knees just touch together. This is a really quite a pleasant resting pose, especially around the lumbar back. Um, so the feet are just hip wide, a little wider than hip wide, and the knees are kissing together. Or of course, roll your legs out and long. Roll your hips, roll the pelvis from side to side. Another little tap here, a little tip, is to kind of squeeze the bum and lift the bum and then re-land the buttocks. So you sort of open the groin area a little and you tuck the tail maybe a little. And also you can squeeze your shoulder blades together. So kind of lifting onto the back skull, pull your shoulder blades together and then land again. Little jiggle, technical term there, little jiggle of those shoulders and try to find that your heart and chest softens down, eyes gaze to your ceiling. So note that we don't want the head and neck in extension and nor do we want the head and neck in flexion. So reorder and adjust your body with kind compassion. 
and of course come under your blanket as necessary. Be aware of your body here today now. Quite recently, uh, in America, in fact, of course, uh, they celebrated Thanksgiving. It was at the end of November. And I know that we're not American, but giving thanks and finding gratitude for your life, for your blessings in your life, for good things and positive states of mind and being are really welcomed by your brain. They really help shift your mind energy. So we're going to use a relaxation gratitude practice today. So as you inhale, exhale with inner awareness, send your mind energy down to the feet and toes and thank your feet and toes for allowing you to practice standing balance today. Inhale, exhale, relax the shins, calves, knees and thighs. And give thanks to your strong legs. On the next breath cycle, relax the buttocks, pelvis, groins and hips. And thank your pelvis and your hips for being so steady and for being mobile. This important junction between the legs and the trunk. And in yoga, a sight of two important energy areas of Muladhara Swadhisthana, the root and the sacral chakras. We may also consider thanking the pelvis for holding many important organs, especially the womb and the bladder, if you like, of thinking of that area of your body. Softening now the belly and waist. And let's give thanks to the navel area, the solar plexus, for gut instinct, for maybe us relating to our willpower and to ambition, courage, fortitude. I mean, it's where we get the word gutsy from, isn't it? She's a gutsy lady. <sighs> Inhale, exhale, and let's travel to the whole of the spine, from the base to the neck to the crown. Thanking your backbone for being the framework and the connection of signals through the body and the nervous system. Breathe calmly as you notice your shoulders and arms and land in the hands and fingers. Let's give gratitude for our skills. Gratitude for your hands and fingers that hug you and hug others and give love and receive love. And for the sense of touch. You will have other areas of your body you wish to give thanks to. But let's all collectively land now in the heart center, Anahata. Thank our beating hearts for our lives and also again for unconditional care and love, self care. And then finally, as your eyes perhaps are closed, come into the area of the third eye, which is Ajna Chakra in yoga, but also the area, if you think of your brain and your brain matter and your mind and consciousness. Give thanks to your creative self, to your intuition, to your ever developing wisdom. 
Inhale, exhale, and finally give thanks to this body of life, this whole self that is unique and rare and special and wonderful. Perhaps give thanks to your ancestors. And then very gently note the softening muscles in the face as you blink your eyes open and roll the head left and right with eyes open. Slow rotation of your head rolling across the mat. You don't have to pick it up and place it. Just roll it, just see how is your neck today at the close of your practice. And when you feel ready, move more or less, mindfully hugging, twisting, or maybe even a full body stretch because you are coming to really the start now of your social weekend, whatever else you are doing in your day ahead. And maybe we could let that yoga attitude lasts longer if we can just remember that as we are attempting to better ourselves through the practice of yoga we will bring that towards others and share that with our friends family and community so important i think in the run-up to christmas and the festive season when we might be socializing more or seeing more folks thank you so much